Hello and welcome everyone to today's Teams Tips on Power BI. I am Amanda Pritchard. I am the Microsoft 365 Specialist in the Office of Information Technology. So we're sharing with you today a little bit about the Office of Information Technology and ways that you can connect with us. If this training is, is going to add value to your work, to your knowledge, then we hope that you can join us in some of our future sessions, some of the things that we have coming up. We're going to post in the Q&A, which is on the right side of your screen, in case that you want to follow us on social media or find us on our website. Uh, you can go to that live event Q&A and find all of those hyperlinks there. In addition, if you have comments, if you have questions, if there's things that you need to let us know, we invite you to post all of those in our moderated chat. It is moderated, so as soon as it comes to us, it takes somebody just a moment to read over it, review it, and then get that posted and shared with the rest of the audience. So feel free to engage with us. We've got people behind the scenes helping to answer those questions, and we do want to make sure that you're getting the most out of this training. It is designed for you, um, and so if there's anything we can do to improve that, just let us know there. I did want to let everyone know about the IT forum that we have coming up. We've started to evolve these IT forums into a, a little bit different of a scope. So instead of bringing you updates um, on a variety of different topics, we're doing the forums now as topical content. So the one that's coming up in August, on August the 19th, is going to be all about a hybrid campus. And the hybrid campus reframes our traditional campus experience, and it's evolving it to connect all campus members, both those who are physically there on campus and those who are there digitally. Uh, in this forum, we're going to investigate how our technology continually innovates our campus uh, by applying that hybrid campus approach. We're going to hear from um, how UTD digital identities are assigned, how those are made secure, even from uh, the help desk and how they're employing a hybrid model of helping those on campus and those who are still remote. If you're interviewing, if you're hiring new employees using a hybrid model, we're gonna cover those tips and best practices there as well. So I, I highly encourage you to join us at the IT Forum to get the latest on how the UTD is um, continually being that hybrid campus. You likely received an OIT notify yesterday that's talking to you a little bit about how our Teams meeting recordings, that location of how those Teams meeting recordings is changing. Uh, it's going to be a difference that's coming up quite quickly. Uh, and so we did post in that email, there's two identical trainings, they're exactly the same, but you can pick whichever one best meets your schedule and your unique needs. If you want to come and see how, um, the, see a preview of that new location, both before that change takes effect and after. You can select from either of those dates uh, to get that information on the, the big change that's coming to campus. Okay, and then I always get a lot of questions about these sessions, just asking, um, are they recorded? Where can I find it? If you have to leave a little early, if um, you get interrupted in the middle of one of our team's tips, we want you to know that you're going to have access to this information. Again, this is not your first and last chance to see um, and hear from our presenters today. So if you do want to be the first to know and be the first to be notified of any new trainings that come live, if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel and we're gonna post that link in the chat as well. But if you wanna subscribe there, um, that's gonna allow you to get the, the latest and greatest information that we're producing, as well as uh, some of our quick tips that we have coming out. We have started to put together quick 30 second segments of information that we get asked the most. And so we do wanna help campus get that information and use that resource so that it can alleviate the stresses that you face every day in your role. So um, this session is recorded. You will be able to find it on YouTube later. So if you want to um, navigate on over there, you can subscribe and that way you'll get a copy of the recording when it becomes available. Okay, 
now I know. This is the moment everyone's been waiting for. Microsoft um, partners with us on a regular basis and has been an incredible resource for the university with allowing us to provide input, interaction, hear our feedback, and really take in um, any of our suggestions and our input. And today, they're going to be presenting on Power BI. Um, I am not the uh, data expert, but Neil, I did put together a little bit of data um, that I wanted to share with you first, because as I understand it, and I'm not the expert, I know you are, but as I understand it, you need to have some sort of data point, a data set first, so that you can use it in Power BI to have that good visualization. So I worked really hard on this, Neil, and I wanted to see, is this the right type of data set that I need to have for Power BI? Well, is, I, I suppose uh, that could I mean, it's work. an option, right? Like, <laughs> uh, if, as long as you as long as you have as long as you have actual uh, uh, numeric <laughs> data for each of those percentages there, uh, then you could input that into Power BI. I'm sure. So I hear you saying it's possible that my charts need a little bit of work. It's possible that maybe you had better lead this session instead of having to rely on how I do my graphs. Is that kind yeah. of the vibe I'm getting? I think it might be better if I just go ahead. If this isn't the right type of data set, then I probably just need to turn it over to the professional and let you take over. You tell UT Dallas, how do we use Power BI? How can it make our data look better and be more engaging for our audiences? So Neil is so gracious to come and give you assistance so you don't rely on my charting um, to give you all of your data. So Neil, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Certainly, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, hi, my name is Neil. I work for Microsoft here as a trainer in Dallas, Texas, so I'm local. <laughs> um, thank you very much for joining today, and I will be sharing my content now. So let me go ahead and share my screen so that we can get some uh, some data in uh, in usage and have some proper visualization and uh, really get into into the specifics uh, of of how you can utilize Power BI. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Give me just a moment here. All right. So are we seeing my screen at this time? Just to clarify. Yes. I almost have it. I'm clicking all the buttons. One moment. Alrighty. Got you. It's live. All right. So we're looking here at Power BI. Um, well, this is actually just me going over the quick agenda, just so that you have an understanding of what we're going to be going over today. And luckily, uh, I will have you know that not only am I going to be using sample data for this Power BI, so no need to worry, Amanda, you actually also can use this live sample data to learn how to utilize Power BI. It's actually a resource directly inside of the application that you can utilize in order to learn the application. So that's actually what I'm going to be using in order to teach you how to utilize Power BI. So what we're going to do, as I said, we're going to start with essentially uh, a basic intro on what Power BI is all about. We will be doing some navigation around the application itself, and then I will be showing you how to utilize various kinds of data and show you what kinds of data you can really use to, to create great visualization within the application itself. This is a quick overview, very quick overview. I know that we already went over a few slides, so I want to make sure that we, but I, I do want to make sure that we have some, uh, some information here. Uh, essentially, for those who are not familiar with what Power BI actually is, uh, it's actually a business analytics service. It's made, uh, a lot of people like to use the, the short term that it is the PowerPoint of data. Um, and, it, and in a way, it quite very much is. It's all about finding the best ways to visualize live data, not just data that was from, you know, this time or that time, but even data that's currently still being accessed and, and currently still being updated inside of a live visualization for you to understand the best how that information works, what it means, 
uh, and what it means for you and, and pot potentially your organization. So uh, we've really made this in such a way, and I'm going to go ahead and minimize the, uh, the window in the bottom right here just so that we have full view of everything. We've made it in such a way where, um, where it's meant to be very easy to understand. There are a lot of tools, but as long as you understand exactly what's going on, as long as you understand what those tools are, you will be in perfect shape. So let's just go over a few things just very quickly. Uh, Power BI is part of what we call the Microsoft Power Platform. It's one of the four solutions that are part of this particular group of the Microsoft 365 environment. Um, Power Apps is one of them. It's a, it's a system for creating applications uh, for you and your organization to utilize together in either no code or low code situations. There's also Power Automate for the purpose of automating tasks between different applications, literally making your apps work for you and not the other way around. Um, and that's actually also part of the system. And then there's Power Virtual Agents, which allows you to quickly, easily build chatbots that you can use uh, to actually ask questions in very natural ways and actually get results from data that you have available within your organization. I say all of that to say this, and this is the reason why I'm bringing these all up in this training, is because all of these can actually all work together. That includes Power, uh, Power BI actually directly uh, sending certain kinds of information to Power Automate. That includes various reports from Power BI being used and visualized inside of Power Apps. That includes data from Power Apps being brought into Power BI. Now, we're not going to be learning all of these different things today. We will be focusing on the basics of Power BI, but I did just want to really go over some of those basic understandings uh, and really just kind of get you kind of in gear of what kind of things can really be done with Power BI. So from here, I believe we'll go ahead and jump into our demonstration environment and we'll go ahead and get started. So as you see right here, we are actually on the Office homepage. So this is actually where you will find yourself if you type in office.com and log in with your credentials. Now I'm here inside of a demo environment, so you'll find all of the sample uh, data and videos and, and files that we use for our demonstrations here at Microsoft. So this is what you're going to see. However, this is a good example of what you would see in your own environment. Now, on the left here, you may find that the various applications are available to you within the Microsoft 365 suite, but it's but it's quite likely that what you'll see right here is not all of them. Actually, it's it's very likely that what you have available and what you see right here are not the same thing. And in order to make sure that you have access to whichever one that you're looking for specifically, as these are typically the most recent ones that you've accessed, what you're gonna wanna do is instead go down to the very bottom to all apps here inside of this page. And that is where you'll find yourself on this page. This is the all apps page, and you'll see an entire list of all of the different solutions available to you within your organization. So whatever, uh, whatever different solutions of the Microsoft 365 suite are available to you within your organization that they have you using, this is where you'll find all of them. Now, these are all the web-based solutions. Uh, Power BI is one of them, and that's where you see right here. Now, what we will uh, what we will do is is we'll be we'll be getting into this uh, application. But before I select it, I do want to just point this out. With all of these, or just about most of these different solutions here, you will see that there's a little icon in the top right corner of them. If you were to select that, you will open up an entire section of documentation about how to utilize the application. So uh, if you wanted to get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more insight on how to utilize it, uh, how it works, you know, various tools and various, uh, just various techniques, go ahead and visit that documentation of any of the applications you're trying to learn. All right, so before we really get started, um, have, are there any questions that have uh, that have populated before we jump actually into the application itself? Are there any that can be answered at this time? You know, there is a question. You might be getting into this in a minute. I'm going to ask it, and if you're about to present on it, you can just have me pause. Uh, the question is, uh, can the data link directly to, to BI, or does it need to be dumped and put into a specific format? Example, PeopleSoft data into Power BI or PeopleSoft into CSV 
into Power BI? Excellent question. The answer is coming soon. And what I mean by that is within the next few moments, <laughs> you will find that there are, many, there are many, many different ways that you can actually bring that data in in just a moment. So I'll go ahead and open up. And that was the only question, right? Yes. Okay, excellent. All right, let's go ahead and get started here in Power BI. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and open up the application here. I'm just gonna take a quick sip of water just so that. All right, excellent. Everything is ready to go. And this is the environment for Power BI. So when you first go into the application, into the web application, this is the first thing you will see. This is the home page. Now, what I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to explain to you where you will find various things inside of the application. And also, I will be explaining exactly how you work within it. Now, on the left side here, you see we're in the home page. That's the tab that we're currently on. You will see a favorite section, a recent section, and these will be for various things like, for instance, uh, recent reports you've been working on, favorited reports, favorited dashboards, more on that later as well, as well as the area where you can create uh, brand new information or brand new uh, visualizations, brand new reports, things of that nature uh, directly from here. And then right beneath that is where you will find data sets. And this is where you will be gathering your data, uh, putting it together into sets that are all associated with each other um, in order to create various kinds of reports. Beneath that, you will find goals. So for instance, if you're trying to measure certain kinds of pro uh, progress inside of, inside of your various reports, you actually will be able to have those inside of a, uh, in, or actually be able to keep track of those in this goals section here. So if there are certain things you're trying to make sure that you're, that, that, uh, that you know, maybe a certain goal that you're trying to achieve by the end of a quarter, and that's actually something that you have visualized in your data, you can actually have that you can actually have that visualized here. Furthermore, there's this there's the section called apps, and this is also a place where you can find data from from different apps. And these apps are essentially different kinds of solutions. So I'm going to go over this uh, this information together at different areas um, because some of it is uh, kind of like different uh, different sides of the same coin, so to speak. So I will be revisiting some of these areas. Now, if anybody had shared their reports or their uh, basic or their various kinds of visualizations or Power BI documents, different kinds of things of the nature with you, you will have a section right here called Share with Shared with Me, where you'll see uh, an aggregate list of that information. Beneath that, and this is actually once again another great place to to be when you're getting familiar with Power BI is the learn section. So down here is the learn section. This is where you can learn directly inside of the application. And then at the very bottom, you'll learn about workspaces. workspaces. Now workspaces are the places that you are working. There is already a few different locations that you would uh, think of that would actually be workspaces. One of them is my workspace, which is your personal place to make your own different kinds of visualizations and reports and dashboards, and it's all private to you. It's a great place to actually work when you are trying to learn how to use the application. It's nothing that you're something that you're sharing with anybody else. It's no, it's not a space that you're sharing with anybody where they can see what kind of things you're creating in Power BI. Uh, whereas other workspaces can be the different uh, different SharePoint sites that you're part of, for instance, especially the ones that were created from a team. Now, those workspaces are collaborative sites where you can actually uh, create visualizations with other individuals, and that's the point of those workspaces. They're a place where when you're creating things in Power BI in those workspaces, others have access to them in some way or another as well, and that's the point of those. So like I said, you already have my workspace. And as you see, this is this is going to be the one that you probably are going to first be in. As you see, that's the one that I am currently in down here. You'll always see the displayed workspace that you're part of at the time right here. And you can switch them just by selecting them here. 
and now I'm inside of the market project team workspace and I can select it one more time. Sales and marketing. Now I'm in the sales and marketing workspace. So these are all examples of different workspaces that I'm part of and I'll just go ahead and open it up and select again. And here I am back in my own workspace. So like I said, remember, it all exists in the workspace, the data that you're that you're that you're collecting, the data sets that you're creating in order to actually have data to use for a report that that will exist in some workspace, whether it's your own or it's one that's uh, that's a um, it's a group workspace like one created from SharePoint. Or teams. All right, so now that I'm in my workspace right here. Now, if I was going to create my own report, I need data. So in order to to get some data, I'm going to have to uh, first figure out some data sources. So let's go ahead and select new up here at the top of my workspace view here. And as you see, there's a few different things that we see here. We see a report, which will be a visualization of your data. We don't have data yet. Here's another kind of report paginated. Then there is a dashboard, which is a place where you can actually assemble various information from multiple reports together to get a, a, a view of uh, some baseline information across an entire set of reports. So if that's something that, for instance, say you have multiple reports from multiple different places, and maybe there's something specifically important about each one of those reports, maybe you don't need to see all of the information on each one of those, but you do need to see something from this one, something from that one, something from this one, something from that one. And you need to sometimes see them together and you don't want to be you don't want to have to go back and forth between your reports to actually see them. That's what a dashboard is for. It's where you can grab various elements of different reports with different live data on them and then bring them together into one view. That's what a dashboard is. Uh, once again, we need a report first. And in order to do that, we need data. How do we get data? We create a data set and that's what we're going to do now. I select create data set. Now there are different ways in which you can get data. There's data that's within your organization. So for instance, discover apps published by other people in your organization. If I select get, then you'll see an entire list of either organizational apps, template apps, and there's some template apps in here, and then there's all apps. And I do want to point out that there's so many different solutions and different applications that you can get data from. So if you're seeing this list here, I can pull out uh, data, especially from places like, for instance, uh, this COVID-19 tracker. This, uh, these are actually uh, particular sources of data that are live that people can use in Power BI. Uh, and as you see, there are other solutions as well. Things like, for instance, uh, Microsoft sample data. Here's actually a perfect example of this data that you can use to learn how to use Power BI. Scrolling down, LinkedIn, um, you know, data from Intune, which is the compliance system within Microsoft. Um, and as you see, there's first party stuff that we've created, but then there's also third party solutions as well. Um, and you'll know who created what by the creator underneath, just as if you went into any particular app store out there to buy an app and it says something along the, the lines of here's what the name is, but it's created by this person. So you're seeing a whole bunch of different solutions. And if you go even further down, for instance, that YouTube site that you use um, at UT Dallas, I believe you said that you use a, uh, a YouTube site to actually uh, share this, um, these trainings and things of that nature after the fact. Am I correct, Amanda? Absolutely, we do. Well, what if I told you, and I say this with Morpheus glasses on, what if I told you that you could actually pull the YouTube ana the analytics from that um, from that account into Power BI and see it as part of your visualization? This I think the session should just shift completely to my personal needs, and we'll just <laughs> go delve into that. I would love to set that up. It sounds great. <laughs> Well, this is this is merely an example. It is it is but it is but a grain of sand in an entire beach of <laughs> different kinds of solutions that you can create with Power BI. So as you're seeing, as I go down this list, there's so many. Um, of course, I, I don't have all the time in the world to point them all out. But as you pull data, you can pull it from applications like these. 
You can also pull them directly from different kinds of services, and you're going to see those as well. And this is going to be some of those as well as part of that list. But then you'll also see that you can bring them in from files and databases. So for instance, if I want to go and pull them in from a file, I can pull them in from local files on my device, OneDrive files, um, either from business or personal, as you're seeing right here, it does give those options. Also files from SharePoint. And then if you, you need to learn more about importing files, you can pull that from here, or there's a, there's a bit of information there. If you go down further, you will also find various kinds of databases, SQL databases, various kinds of things like that. Um, if I was to once again, go to my organization, or not my organization, I'm sorry, um, to services, and then to samples, this is also a place where you can use that sample data. So if you're trying to find different content in order to learn how to use the solution, you like to lose to use the application, you can go to the samples section here and you can actually use one of our live sample data um, or, or data samples that actually will give you uh, data that you can bring into Power BI and will update. So for instance, I'll give you a I'll give you a perfect example. Let's go ahead and select this. Which one shall we select? Let's go ahead and select this IT spend analysis sample. Now, as you see, it'll explain to you what it is. So IT spend analysis sample. This industry sample dashboard and underlying report analyze the planned versus actual costs of the IT department of a company. This comparison helps us understand how well the company planned for the year and allows us to investigate areas with huge deviations from the plan. This, this company, it's essentially, it's really kind of helping, or this particular data analysis sample here is for the purpose of making sure that uh, how, much, how much money the IT company is spending compared to how much that they expected to spend, things of that nature, that's what you'll be seeing in this example, and we can learn Power BI with this data. So now that I'm importing this data directly into my uh, into my workspace, I now have an IT analysis sample dashboard that was created for me. I have a data set that was created for me, all my data is in there, and I have a report already created. And this is all just already generated content for learning. So this is what you will see. I will teach you how to create this information yourself as well, but I wanted to show you that this is one of the ways that you can learn. So we will start with viewing the data set, which is this icon right here. So now that we have, we're now inside of the data set, we can look and see the details of that data set. There is one particular workspace that it is used in. Let's go ahead and look at it. So inside of this particular report, we will see the different kinds of ways in which data is being used. Now it's all through this information here. So you see that there are things like, for instance, uh, various kinds of visualizations, and this is what we're looking at here. And, and we can actually make some more room for ourselves right here by minimizing this left pane here. And just like, uh, just like some other applications within our environment, you can have multiple pages of your report. So this report right here, this is one page of the report. This is the second page. And then this is the third. And all of these, all of these pages of this report are all together in this one report. So they all come together. Now, like I said, this is already a pre-built report. So this is um, this typically you would build from the data that you've brought into uh, into Power BI. But this is the kind of visualization that you can create. You can create different kinds of charts, uh, different kinds of, of graphs and different kinds of things to really just uh, get a good idea of what kind of information or, or what's going on with the information that you have available. And you can decide how that looks and, and what it will mean for those who are going to view it. And there's a lot of different kinds of uh, visualization as part of these pages. There are actual live charts here, but then there's also things to make sure that 
uh, it's, it's also understood the way you are actually looking at this data. So you actually have a title, uh, you have a title object right here, which is essentially just a text box where you can type in a title. You can also bring in things like images and different kinds of things like that onto the report as well. So if you want to put company logo in the corner, things of that nature, you can do that. And it's, it'll be part of this page. Now, now that we are here inside of this report, we can do various things so that we can break this data down and understand it. Now we see these four different charts here and there's different information on these charts. And same thing with the next pages and things of that nature, you see even more information here. But I want to show you what you can do in order to really narrow down this information to the specifics that you need. For instance, maybe you're only concerned with the information having to do with the USA. As you see, it's, uh, here's the variance plan uh, percentage by, by sales region right here but maybe you are only concerned with the USA. Maybe you're not part of these other regions and they're not your responsibility. Well, what you can do is while there is a filters section over here and I can type in certain kinds of information to filter, it's even easier to just click on what it is that you want to filter out. So as you see, I've clicked only USA. And because of that, all of the data has now changed to only reflect the information regarding the US. All the other data has been, uh, has been grayed out. So if I was to do the same thing with Latin America, it'll show me completely different data so that I understand what's going on specifically with Latin America. Once again, Canada. And as you see, we can see what's going on specifically with Canada. All of the data that has been, that has been visualized here will adjust itself live in order for us to understand what's going on by, by visually and just really interactively filtering out that information the way we need to. The same thing will go across the other pages as well. So if I wanted to go and once again select, I'll select Latin America and the other information has cut itself. Same thing once again, USA. And now we're seeing that USA makes up this percentage of these graphs, it's actually quite a bit of the percentage of these graphs, has been made up by the US. Same thing with Europe, which will make up the rest of it. And then you will then see the various uh, information. So US, the actual versus the plan. So they're quite a bit over the plan. And then same thing with Europe, they were 30, they were, the plan was 31 million, they're at actual of 34 million. So all of this data will filter itself out just by what you're clicking on. Now, so far we've only been uh, viewing this data. We have not actually been editing it. We haven't, been, we haven't done anything in terms of changing this report. We've only been viewing this report. In order to actually, um, in order to actually work on this report, we would have to go back. So let's go ahead and select the ellipses here and we will select edit and now this switches from a view that's only viewing the report now you're seeing what it looks like to actually make a report like this now we see we see that there were multiple pages and you'll see that those pages have now populated themselves down here as these little tabs so tab number one right here and we have this information here tab number two right here tab number three right here. So we have them all at the bottom. So those are your pages of your report. Then you'll see the way that we were able to create or the way the, the visualizations were created was with this section right here where you can create visualizations based on the data. Now, the best way to actually really explain how you can uh, create this information is most likely with a blank document and we will be doing that as well. I just wanted to quickly give you an overview of exactly what this looks like first. Now on the right side here you will find that there are also your fields. These are the information that's pulled from whatever data sources you have used. So for instance if you pull in something like an Excel document which is one of the things you can pull in then the tables from that Excel document will be used as fields. 
Same thing with if you brought in something from a database. Different kinds of fields from that database will be uh, will, can be used directly inside of uh, these these various charts here. Same thing with if you bring in data from an app. The app has fields that are part of it, and that's what is brought in then to the uh, into this solution in order to then be used for you to create your visualizations. So once you have your visualizations that you want to create, we'll go ahead and create a brand new page on the right side here so that we can really start to understand what kinds of visualizations we can use or create in order to really get our point across with the different kinds of information. So these fields here, once again, that's the data that we're going to use. So maybe we want to see, and these are, these are drop down menus with different kinds of data inside of them. So maybe we want to see by country or by sales region, one of these two, let's go ahead and say, and I'm going to kind of expand, expand this so that we can really see it. I know that it's going to start kind of making things over here look smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of minimize things and, and maximize them just so that we have room. So as you see right over here, I'm going to go ahead and start taking some of this data and working with it to make a visualization. So let's go ahead and select business area. There's only one, so we're not going to really worry with that. Let's go ahead and select cost element group. So cost element, the group of the cost element group. And as you see, this is a list of the different groups of cost element. There's or the cost element group administrative, CapEx, uh, so all these different hardware and software, labor, all these different things here. So all I did was take this data and then drag it into place. Now, let's look at, let's look in fact, and as you see, these are different kinds of, uh, these are different kinds of things that you could bring into. So let's go ahead and say amount and drag that in. So amount, by cost element group, and this is the actual, this is essentially like an equation between the two. So you have via administrative, this is the amount of, of, uh, of information from there, or the, uh, the amount of money each in each of these categories. And as you see, all I was able to, all I had to do was drag in this information to really kind of make it relate to each other. Now let's go ahead and bring in country and region. Let's go ahead and take country and region and drag it in. So now you're seeing cost element group amount per country and region. And these are a lot of countries and regions. Maybe it would be better and I can control Z instead of, uh, instead of having to um, find an undo button as, as you see some of these have been minimized. So you can do control Y, control Z to undo or redo. Down here, I'm gonna actually select sales region instead because this will be a little bit more of a simple view of this information. And don't worry, we will make this larger. So what we can do is from this information that we're seeing here, now let's go ahead and now take a closer look at it. What we have here is we have cost element group by country region, or the actual amount of money uh, spent by cost element group per country or sales region. So it's essentially a drag and drop system that you could use in order to bring this data together. Let's go ahead and create a different one. We'll go ahead and remove this. Let's go ahead and say department. And we, if I go and I drag this department section, you'll see a list of all the departments within this data. So as you see, the departments are just numerical, so we won't really have a good idea of these, so we'll, we won't work with that. Let's go for instead IT area. So list of the IT areas. BU support, enable, an enablement, functional governance infrastructure. So now let's see what, and I know I do know that this looks very small. I'm sorry about that. Let me try and see if I can get it larger. So 
do is we'll try to get it a little bit larger here. And I, and I think I'll also make the uh, the view of this. I'll try to put it in full screen, see if that actually helps us with the view of the different kinds of tools that we have available up at the very top. So let's go ahead and fit this to page or fit this to actual size. So now you're seeing this as it is. And this is a table, so you can actually you can actually switch this from um, from from a top like like from A to Z or Z to A. And you are also just able to switch to focus mode on any particular visualization that you're creating. It's this icon right here at the top. And what that does is it allows you to then immediately switch to only focusing on this particular visualization in the view. So, and I'm trying to go ahead and uh, see if I can get this to get larger. But first, let's see if we can add some more fields to this. So I have this list of different IT areas. Now let's go ahead and select, once again, fact. And then what we can do is then bring in something like, for instance, variance to plan. And there's variance to plan in, um, in numeric value and in percentage. Same thing with all of these different, with these other options here. So I'll go variance to plan. And now we will see the variance to the plan and then the actual. And now we can actually see a difference between the two. Now, perhaps this is not the right kind of visualization though for this information. What you would then want to do is open up this visualizations tab and then decide to switch that, uh, that visualization to another. So perhaps instead you want it to be a column chart or for instance, a stacked column chart. And I think that actually might look quite nice for this. So as you're seeing, variance to plan versus actual, and then you'll see this visualization as such. Whichever one you currently have selected, you can then select one of these different visualizations, and that'll be what you what, what it will use for this information. Essentially, all, all you have to do is know what information you're trying to display, and then you'll be able to create different kinds of visualizations using that data, using the information from the right here. Now there's different ways that you can actually also change this as well. You can select format, and then you can actually change different colors. You can change different, uh, different X axis, uh, Y axis, all the different information having to do with this particular uh, visualization. And with this visualization, you can scale it. So as you see right here, this is actually one that you can scale very easily. So if you want to take up a certain amount of, uh, of area of the, um, of the particular page that you're on, then you can do that with this. Are we doing all right with questions so far? Yes, we had a few. Some are uh, very specific and I can absolutely see the use case. Uh, Renee was asking if there was a data set sample for cost planning for a large event. And I know you showed some of the samples, so that may just take, you may not have a direct answer now, that may take some just uh, the users looking through and searching, but mm -hmm. I know there's there's so many examples that are already built, so you're not having to do the complete construction on your own. Is, is that right, Neil? That's correct, that's correct. Um, there's like a retail analysis sample. There are various kinds of, uh, of sample data there but it's going to vary based on, uh, I mean, really, it's it's really for learning, uh, not, not as much necessarily exactly a perfect, a perfect match to whatever situation you would be creating, um, but there might be something that matches. Um, I will say that definitely the best solutions you might find, you might find are actually closer to being um, something a little bit more custom, as long as you have the actual data Perfect, thank you. No other questions? Not at this time. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and look into some other particular areas. So there is also analytics. Now, 
um, you can actually look at this and, and analyze different kinds of information. Um, so for instance, you can right click any particular area. And you can do things like, for instance, if you select analyze, you can say find where this distribution is different. And then it'll actually give you information about different parts of the data. It'll actually try to figure it out. Things like, for instance, if you see, um, for instance, if you see that there's a very large dip in, in uh, for instance, something like like how much uh, how much revenue was created at this time or that time inside of this inside of this data, you can actually use the AI system to actually explain why why something ha looks different from the others. Now let's go ahead and look into some other data. Let's go ahead and jump out of this view. And as a matter of fact, let's jump into another another workspace. Let's go into sales and marketing. And I will not save this report that I have been creating. Let's go into sales and marketing and let's go ahead and look at the report created there. So as you see, this is a report right here. And we see total sales by division, TVs, appliances, quadcopters, phones, and cameras. And this is a much more simple solution right here. This is a much more simple visualization. It only has one page, as you see. Uh, it has a pie chart to show how much of everything there was, and then it gives you how much in terms of sales per uh, by sales period we see right here. And as you see, it's, it's uh, cut down quarterly, uh, weekly per quarter. Now, if I was to go and start working on this one, if I select edit, from here, I'm able to do things like, for instance, maybe I want to then look at the data that's being used here. And the data that's being used here was actually from an Excel document. The reason why I know that is because of the fact that it was from a sheet. If I went to select and, um, and went to data sets, then the analysis for this, or if I went back to the actual, I'm sorry, if I went back to the workspace, then you will see that the data set for that is this right here. And so then what we are able to do is from this data set, we can analyze in Excel, do different kinds of things of that nature to actually look at this data. But when you're working with the data, because it's an Excel document, um, that, that Excel document has static data. Uh, it is a little bit different from having, uh, for instance, something like a live database or some kind of source that will constantly move. So I do want to point that out. So let's go ahead and go back to the report. And we will go ahead and select. Uh, we want to actually view this information a little bit differently, just very briefly. Let's go ahead and specifically select uh, quadcopters. So then once I select quadcopters, the the first graph there was actually, or this chart right here, actually had to do with cameras, so it completely disappeared, but the quadcopters ones remains. So maybe as a person who views this data, maybe this is the only data that I need to see. I want, it, I want to view it like this every time. Well, there's actually a tool for that. If you go up to the very top here, you will find bookmarks. Now these bookmarks, as you work on them, uh, or as you work on this particular information, you could actually add a personal bookmark, which will save the data in this way. So that uh, now this only works for you. So when you add this bookmark, you can decide um, my view. Maybe this is the way you always need to see this data. Maybe the other data is not important to what you do on a regular basis. So you just need to make a default view for yourself. Then you can select my view. You can also elect to make this the default view for yourself. And then you can select save. And then at any time, whenever you see this yellow right here, it is currently set to a view. But if, at any particular time, you can also switch it back. So if you need to switch back the, uh, the personal data back to the regular, then you can select this, uh, this reset to default right here, which is this little arrow that looks like this. Select reset and it will look like this. So it doesn't matter how many different things that you set for your filters um, when you are trying to get your custom view, 
once you have it set, if you need to set it back to default, you will see this arrow right here turn yellow and you can select it and that will return it to default. Now, to the right of that, you will see the view that I have selected right now is fit to page. I can also decide fit to width, and this is actually essentially the view of the actual page you're in. There's also actual size. So the actual size of the document is this, is this size. And then you also have the option of full screen it. And this is very good for if you're really trying to present this to multiple people. Maybe if you have it on screen and you're really trying to make sure that people really see that information the way it's supposed to be seen. And if you need to then bring it back, you can just select this icon here. And that brings it back. All right. Now on the right side here, there are a couple other things that you might want to uh, you might want to find out. There are things like, for instance, maybe you want to have a conversation with the other individuals who are working on this particular, uh, or who will be viewing this report, or people who actually have submitted this report, and you want to have a conversation with them. You can create comments in a Power BI report just like you can inside of a uh, instead of say a word document or an excel document so for instance you can select a particular area and then you can create a comment based on it so you can go ahead and select uh, enter your comments here and then mention people to grab their attention so for instance so i'll go ahead and select here i will go ahead and enter a comment and then i can do something like at and i will go ahead and select maybe somebody like nick What should we do with this current trend in the data? So I was able to add mention Nick. I was able to ask him about the information. He could then reply to me. We, we can actually have an entire conversation around this data right here. And so as we are working on this on this particular or as we're even just viewing this particular um, report and just seeing how this information is uh, is really has been displaying with us, we are able to then uh, um, have an entire conversation on the side about it. All right, now I see that we are getting kind of close on time here. I do just want to make sure uh, was there anything else in there that we have to make sure that we go over? No, I have a couple of pending questions, but I think they're more of a one on one follow up. All righty. All right. Well, that will be uh, that that's that's perfectly fine. Um, I do want to point out that sometimes I will say that the data itself does need to be refreshed. There is a refresh button right here to refresh those visuals. So if that data is live, then you will want to sometimes refresh it and that will give you the newer information. Now that you have various, uh, you have various reports, if you have more than one or if you have a large, if you have a, you know, if you have multiple reports, if you have just one, uh, regardless, you can always create then a dashboard. And that's the last thing that we'll be going over in this training. And a dashboard essentially is a, a single page where you can have multiple different kinds of data uh, shown together from different locations, even for instance, from different, uh, different uh, reports, but you can actually select certain elements of each report and then bring them together. This data, uh, this particular uh, dashboard here is empty, so I will switch workplaces one more, or workspaces one more time. I'll go back to my own workspace and I'll go to that IT spend analysis sample dashboard that was also created as well. So some of this information, all of this information that you're seeing right here is uh, is coming from multiple uh, multiple locations. Some of it is from is from one page of one dashboard, some of it's from another page of another dashboard. And so for instance, you saw this particular um, this particular chart here. This is the one that I was talking about had different um, different 
information based on what I had selected as far as different countries. And if you select any of these, again, it will open up that particular report that that particular uh, bit of visualization lives in. So it actually brought us back to this report. But now I'll go ahead back to that uh, back to that dashboard one more time because there's actually something that I want to show you that you're able to do. It's very, very, it's amazing actually. It's something that you can do with the data that you see right here. Maybe you want to ask different questions about that data. For instance, if you go up to here, you select ask a question about your data inside of this particular dashboard. I can say, for instance, I'll select preparing Q with, I'll select the, the question right here. And as you see, it's, it's giving me a bunch of different questions I can ask. This is you literally asking the data a question. Things like, for instance, What was the variance in the USA? 12.93 million. I can go back to Europe. 2.13 million. So I can actually ask regular questions to this information and actually receive different responses. And I did actually have a little bit of a, uh, I had a typo, but if you noticed, it actually figured out that I had a typo, but then matched that typo up to different solution or different areas inside of the data itself, different parameters of that data, different fields. And from that, it was able to figure out what I type or what I was looking for and then still gave me an answer. So this is one of the most amazing things about Power BI. The fact that even though you brought in all of this information, that all of this raw data and all these different kinds of numbers and different kinds of, of, um, of, of live information, and you're having it display all of it in these different ways, some of it more complex, some of it more simple, you're able to then at the end of the day, ask it even the most basic questions and get that information out. So for instance, um, what were the sales by region? And then it gives me a map based on region, North America. I can select North America. And then, oh, we'll go ahead and select what were the, what was, the, what, what, what were the, not the sales. What was the actual cost? By region. So now if I select North America or by country, actually we'll go ahead and uh, switch this to country. And as you see, when you select these, it'll actually give you these different, these different um, uh, so suggestions. So I'll go ahead and select, for instance, actual cost. I depart. So then these are different things that you can do. And these are different ways that you can have this visualization. I did want to also point out that whichever ones that you have, that you have selected, what is the IT plan by, or what is the plan by IT area? Once you have one of these, you are able to actually pin that as a visual. So if you wanted to pin this, that you had just created by asking a question, as a new visualization in this dashboard, you can do so. All right, I know we're just at time. Are there any final things that, uh, that we need to go over, Amanda? We have just a few questions, and I know you probably won't have time for all of them. So um, the one that I think we're gonna ask as our final question is, uh, is there a way to see the data model showing the relationships between the tables from which the data comes? showing a relationship for, by which the, the, the tables that the data actually comes from, like so the source of that data? Yes, correct. Hmm. Now that would be something that you would most likely, if it was something like, for instance, that you wanted to explain where that, where that data was coming from 
in terms of um, like whenever you're looking at different data, you're trying to understand where that data comes from. Hmm. Uh, or if you're trying to communicate that or if that needs to be communicated to the people who, are, who will be viewing this report. Uh, I'm not sure exactly just in the amount of time that we have here. I'm not sure exactly how you would visualize it. Um, unless you actually knew the answer yourself and you were and you wanted to actually type that in in order to like as part of that page um, so that people will then see this information was from here this information was from here like the sources um, but as far as adding having that citation in there live I don't have an answer at this time not a problem no I think that's great thank you so much Neil oh no problem well, no problem. It was it was a pleasure working with y'all today. Uh, definitely, thank you very much for uh, for starting your journey on Power BI, uh, and we will definitely continue to work with you as you go through your Power Platform adventures and experiences. Thank you so much. I know our attendees appreciate the information. Your charts were just a step above what I created, just a little bit better. So I appreciate you sharing your expertise uh, with us today and um, the partnership that we have with Microsoft is incredible. Uh, for all of you watching, if you have uh, further questions, you can feel free to reach out. We will send a survey out after this event and some follow up. So you will be able to find it on YouTube later. Uh, thank you so much. Remember, we're here to help.